artist Charles Wolf here. Let's get to some painting. Today I'm feeling a little crazy. We're going to do something a bit different than how I normally approach abstract paintings. We're going to start out with some PVA glue straight from the tube. Now normally I would grab my blow dryer and dry off this glue before proceeding to paint, but today I'm going to paint on it while it's still wet. I know, a little crazy, and I don't know how well this is going to work, but we're going to try it anyways. Be experimental, and I'm going to make a lot of decisions today that I normally don't do, and just try to be different. I'm going to paint a painting that I typically wouldn't paint, just for the fun of it. The decisions that you see me make today are sort of counterintuitive, or opposite of how I normally approach things. And it's a personal challenge to me to paint in a way that I normally don't. You'll see what I mean as we go along. We're going to start today by taking some of this aqua green with the palette knife, and I'm going to sort of randomly place some splotches with my palette knife sort of evenly distributed across the top third of this canvas. Typically, in my abstracts, I like to have large sections of one color. Each section can then sort of spill into the next. I very much like gradations, so today I'm going to avoid all of that. I'm going to place it fairly evenly distributed across the canvas. Instead of having a gradation, I'm going to have contrast be the focal point of this composition. In addition, I'm really focusing on negative space. What's negative space? Well, negative space is the areas of less activity. In this case, it's the white of the canvas. So I'm going to allow a lot of the canvas to show through, and it's the areas that do not have paint, but perhaps have some of that PVA glue, that is going to be the focal point of this composition. So you can see I'm trying to not have very thick blocks of color, but just these thin splotches across the top here with this aqua green. Now I'm taking some of the Mars black straight from the tube. Here it is. The same process here, splotching it here and there, somewhat randomly. Really focusing on the top third, but halfway through, I will go and work on the bottom third. The color palette I'm using today is also fairly wild. I have three different kinds of hot colors. Today, I have the red oxide, namphthal crimson, cadmium orange hue. In addition, I have my Mars black there, as well as the aqua green I mentioned earlier. These are high contrast colors, and I want this piece to be very loud, sort of insistent. Green and red are complementary colors. That means that they are somewhat of a clash between them, and they're going to really be extra emphasized by putting them next to each other. Each color will look more intense. The red will be more red, and the green will be even more green looking, because they're sitting in pure pigmentation right next to each other. Now, again, I typically don't like this sort of chaotic, cluttered way of painting, but I thought, you know, I need to challenge myself, be a little bit different, and try a painting like this at least once. So today, that's what I'm doing. Putting on lots of the paint. I want a very dramatic texture with this composition. It's very important to me that the texture be a primary feature as you step next to this painting and look at it closely. I'm also painting on a 12 by 24 inch canvas. I really like this proportion. And now I've switched over to the Namthal Crimson. Here I'm using the same technique as before. I'm looking for even distribution across the canvas with this Namthal Crimson. I 
As an artist, I think it's important that I always try to challenge myself to do something new, to be bold, to be a little reckless, even impulsive. The name of the channel, of course, Impulsive Artistry. And I'm always trying to develop and refine my approach to painting, to be looking for the novel, the new, and that is why today I'm just really trying to step out of my comfort zone here and try to paint something that I typically wouldn't. I've seen paintings like this that I find very effective, and so I thought I would give one a try. Sometimes I see paintings like this, and they're just too much going on. It's just too chaotic for my personal aesthetic taste. It's important that I'm always challenging and always trying to grow with my compositions and with my art. If you find that you are stuck doing the same things over and over again, try to branch out every once in a while. It's very refreshing, and it can really get you jump-started in a new direction with your more typical compositions. Here I'm coming back in with the PVA glue. I'm going to spread this out with my spatula. The PVA glue adds extra texture underneath. A little bit of paint stuck in there but that's okay we're going to cover it up mostly i just want some variation in the texture underneath all of my splotches of paint it may look a little bit messy now but we're going to fix it as we go along Grabbing my palette knife once again, I'm back into my Mars Black. I've added some more paint to my palette down there. I'm going to start working on distributing this out over the bottom half of this composition, and in a few spots at the top as well, if I feel like there's a hole where I need some more of the black. This is a pretty easy composition to replicate. You can pick different colors, or use fewer colors if you would like, something that's a bit more analogous and homogenous overall. into the red oxide here. It's a very interesting experience painting over this PVA glue because it's moving, it's dripping down and it's distorting the different strokes that I put at the top and they're becoming smaller and becoming squished and elongated in strange ways and so it adds a bit of variety, even more randomness to the composition beyond my control. I can simply put the strokes down but they're going to move. It's an interesting process of not being able to fully control where the paint ends up, which is why I'm distributing it out in the way that I'm doing. I'm trying to leave a lot of the white showing as much as possible. Again, the focus is on the white. The colors are very bold and they really grab your attention, but the thing that pulls this piece together, I think, is the canvas itself. And in fact, I'm thinking about hanging this painting so that the canvas is oriented on a diagonal, which really makes the viewer have to focus on the canvas itself. It's a piece of art on the wall. It's the object itself is the canvas and the paint. And so if I hung it straight, People might not notice it, may not pay attention to it, but if you put it at a diagonal, as I have done in my own home, and people have come over, friends have come over and seen my work, they're always struck by it. It's so odd to have a painting that is not hung straight, and to have it be presented to you in a very dramatic flair. Maybe that's too artsy and too weird for some people, and that's okay. 
If you don't like this piece, there's lots of other paintings on my channel, and that's fine. Check those out. Uh, leave a comment below. Do you like this type of art? Do you dislike it? You know, let me know why. I would love to get some feedback from you all on it. I'm just trying to branch out a bit, have some fun with just putting paint on a canvas, seeing what happens and reacting as the composition comes to life on its own. here with the Namthal Crimson. I'm going to follow that up with the Cadmium Orange Hue. Lots of paint that I'm using today. Thick dollops right onto the canvas. If you're not used to using a palette knife, this is a great composition to try yourself. Each of these little blocks that I'm putting on here do not need to be symmetrical, and so you can get some practice with how much pressure you need. When you're using a knife, it's important to keep it nice and light. Try not to press too hard. You'll really grind the paint and smear it over a long distance if you press harder. But if you just gently dab it, a lot of the paint will come off on its own, as I'm doing here with this aqua green. I love the way that green just shimmers against that red. It's such a contrast. And because I picked a paler, sort of a bluey green, I think that contrasts even more with the orange. I'm actually fairly happy with how this painting turned out. It is very different for me, very dramatic, sort of in your face. And I like that aspect of it. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and that's fine, but for me it was a fun challenge and a fun process working on this painting, just trying to be different, trying something new. spots here and there with the aqua green. I've almost run out of it, as you can see. Again, if you're just watching my channel for the first time, this painting is very different than what I normally do. My regulars would know that. Aqua the cadmium orange hue. I'm going to use up the rest of this paint on my palette. You can see I'm using a cardboard palette because I get a lot of boxes from Amazon and I don't want to be wasting the cardboard. It looks nicer on camera to have a clean sheet every time I'm painting. If you don't want to spend the money on buying a nice acrylic palette, you don't have to do that. Piece of cardboard, cut off the edge of it, and away you go. I've added some more of the cadmium orange hue to my palette. Felt like I needed some more of the orange. Here on the camera, the difference between the three red colors, it's a bit subtler and difficult to see, but in person, you can really distinctly see the three different colors playing and interacting. Very warm, rich, and vibrant, just jumping off the canvas at you. It's very, like I said before, dramatic. It's very fun. Working faster now. Now I'm going to take a dry three inch brush and just gently, ever so gently, 
lift up here at the corners and then across the center very very faintly obfuscating these splotches dragging them through each other to vary the paint a bit just felt like the individual splotches were needing a bit more interest and this light dragging technique will gently blend the colors together there on my brush how they've blended together I don't want there to be mush but I didn't want it to be quite so individual perhaps it looked better before I don't know but I did it now so I have to stick with it again trying to make decisions I normally wouldn't trying to be original trying to be different coming back here over the top with some more of the aqua green using my palette knife there spreading those out some more splotches If you'd like to see more of my work, you can follow me here on YouTube. I have about a hundred paintings, I think, up now, just about. You also can find my work at my blog, impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. Uh, also, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram, as well as on Google+. Just look for Impulsive Artistry. A little more of the orange here, and we're just about done with this piece. Thank you so much for watching and listening today. I hope that you try to paint one of your own. It's a lot of fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.